ticked off is when people tell me what I think. I hate when people tell me that I'm smart, or I think I'm smart, or I think I'm beautiful, or something like that, because people don't know what I think. What makes me mad is when adults stereotype teenagers as being all the same and having all the same problems as when they were young. And really, we're all individuals with our own individual problems. What really ticks me off is when people create rumors about me, and they don't know the facts. Just lace up your sneaks and head for the streets for some hot summer sports. I'm Joe from Metzl Ford High School in Dearborn. You're watching Club Connect. Yeah! Listen up. This is an Emmy. You can't put it on a rope, and you can't hang it from your wrist. But every year, the folks who make TV in Detroit fight like cats and dogs to win a truckload of these. Seriously, in this year's competition, Ken McMullen of South Lyon High School won a student award for excellence for producing this public service announcement about substance abuse. Way to go, Ken. Hey, my friend, got any Coke? Listen, let me tell you a couple of things about cocaine. It doesn't matter who you are or what side of the tracks you're from, it's dangerous. It doesn't matter if you use it to be cool or if you think it makes you a better businessman. It's addictive and it's deadly. Using cocaine is, well, it's just plain stupid. the greatest science fiction story of all time, Isaac Asimov's Nightfall. In the distant future, a planet of eternal light faces extinction. 
Good. It didn't have that much entertainment, action, or anything. And I like scary, action-packed movies, and this movie wasn't suited for me. <laughs> I thought this movie was confusing. It wasn't entertaining. There was no action, no violence. And a lot of things didn't make sense to me personally. The director, what he meant to make this movie, I have no idea. And I would sure, surely like to ask him why he made this movie, because I don't know. I would not recommend this to any of my uh, fellow classmates or teenagers, you know. I might buy my grandparents two tickets. You had to be into that to understand it, be into either faith or real science to understand this kind of movie. I thought that it was, you mean you would catch it and then it would go on to something else. And then you would catch that part and then you get missed again. You would miss it and it would catch on to something else and you wouldn't know what the movie was talking about or what it was doing. Nightfall, rated PG-13. We've had, had a lot of deaths in my family, like in less than a year. My aunt and my uncle and then my grandfather and um, my great aunt. And see, I didn't really know any of those people, so it really didn't affect me. But when I lost my brother, it was just like in the face. <laughs> it was kind of weird. And I don't think I'll ever get over it in time. When I found out, I was very shocked and screaming and, oh God, why, and that type of thing. Then a lot of crying. Like the first couple days, I was, I just bawled my head off. That was just like over and over. I just, every time, everything I, every time I turned around, I just started, just started bawling my head off. Personally, what I did every night before I went to bed, I kept a diary and I'd write everything down, what I felt during the day, and it helped me sleep a little bit better at night if I was thinking about something, put it in there. And another thing for me that was the hardest part that made me probably the most, that affected me the most, was thinking about me dying, the fact that I could die any day, just like they had done. You know, that you have to more or less live life one day at a time. The best thing to do was to keep busy so that I could uh, keep it off my mind, listen to music, just go to movies, do things with people that are still here. <laughs> Talking about the, all the good times that you had together and all the funny, th funny things that they would do or say or, you know, just looking at, especially being in video class helped a lot because you have a lot of videotape of them. So you get to watch that and it's almost like they're still here. You know, that's kind of, that was nice, hearing their voice. and That was, it was kind of eerie, but that kind of helped. Prayer definitely, definitely helped a lot. Also, talking about it is very, very important. Well, I felt real comfortable talking to my friend because he, about a year before he lost his brother, and he knew what was going on in my mind, so he helped me through that a lot. And he always used to talk about it openly when, um, whenever we would go out someplace before my brother died. So it was, it was a lot easier when my brother died for me, having him there. I wrote a lot of poems and things, and one analogy that I made in one was that 
when they were killed, it left a wound in my heart. And time heals wounds, but there's always that scar. I still think about it in class every so often, but I guess you have to go on with life. This is life in the fast lane, and you're about to meet a lady who drives it every day to work. You get into a little white knuckle driving up here, you really got to pay attention. I'm Kim Bryant, and I'm a test driver for Ford Motor Company and have been for 10 years. On the high speed track, you really get to push your performance cars. The new Probe, the Mustang, the Cougar, you can really get them moving up here definitely my favorite part of the track. I really get a high off this 
speed. The test driver for Ford Motor Company aids in research and development. We're constantly testing prototypes, engines, transmissions, axles, every aspect of the vehicle. Gear down, and then wide open throttle. Some of the most exciting aspects of this job is the new cars. We get all the new prototypes. We get them far before anybody else ever even knows about them. In 1978, I heard that they were hiring at the Michigan Proving Grounds, and I was really challenged to, to try it out. I knew it would be a, a good paying job because it was a non-traditional job. Uh, normally men had the job, and I, I was just really challenged, intrigued by it. It sounded really exciting. So for the next year, I filled out an application once a week, sent it in the mail, and then followed up with a call every two weeks. It got to the point where They'd hear my voice, so the personnel man would hang up on me, say, no, we're not hiring, and hang up. And after an entire year, I was just about ready to give up, and they called. And I was really excited, and I offered to come down immediately. And he said, no, no, that's OK, come down tomorrow. And that was 10 years ago. Driver's Ed in high school, when I was 16, was an absolute nightmare. Um, I didn't even know where to put the key in the ignition. I knew nothing about cars. I finally got through Driver's Ed with the high school, and I went to get my driver's license. And I was so nervous, I threw it in drive and hit the parking cement block and forgot to put it in reverse and the, the, the instructor said just take it easy and put it in reverse. We went, we went down to his bank, he cashed his paycheck, brought me back and he said yeah you're good enough. If you had told me 10 years ago I would be a test driver, that I'd be a good test driver, that I would graduate from college, that I would accomplish some of the things I've done, I would never have believed it. This job has really, it's made me grow up. It's made me be more responsible to myself and to other people. It's been a good job and I value it. I value it for that. Hi, I'm Dr. Howard Schubiner, and today we're going to talk about acne. First of all, why do teens get acne? When puberty hits, teens' bodies change in big ways. They get taller, heavier, stronger, and grow hair in all sorts of places. Along with that, they get changes in the skin. Your skin can get oily and greasy. We know cars need extra oil, but your skin doesn't. The oil on skin, coupled with a special bacteria that lives on the skin, causes those dreaded zits. So if you use grease on your hair, keep your hair off your forehead. And for girls who use makeup, Look for makeup that says oil-free on it. If you do break out, what can you do about it? There are a few don'ts. Don't panic. Most teens get some pimples, but it's usually temporary. Resist the impulse to pick at those zits if you can. Picking can cause scars. Don't worry about your diet. What you eat doesn't cause acne. Too much washing or scrubbing can dry the skin and lead to irritation. So don't overdo it with scrubbers like these. There are a number of products that can help, and these are available without a prescription. Products like these have an alcohol base, and they'll help to dry your skin. Medication like these contains benzoyl peroxide, which is a drying agent and also helps to kill the bacteria that causes acne. Try these first. Use small amounts every day or every other day for about a month or two. If you're still not satisfied, see a doctor who can prescribe other medications. We now know a lot about acne, why teens get it, what causes it, and what you can do about it. Unfortunately, we still don't know why the big zit always hits just before the big date. But we're working on it. Do you have a question on a health matter? From acne to headaches to venereal disease. If you do, write us at this address, Club Connect, Box 56, Detroit, Michigan. 48277. We'll get you the answers you need. Pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. When the music is hot, 
I wish these lips had legs. These kids can dance at DeSoto's, but I'm out of here. Yo! Wonderworks presents Maricela. Linda Lavin stars in the story of a Salvadoran girl who emigrates to Los Angeles to find a better life. And at nine, the Marquis asks for Georgina's hand. That's on Upstairs Downstairs, while at ten, Palfrey finds the key to a sinister plot on Mr. Palfrey of Westminster tonight on WTBS. <laughs> When the drum beats go like this So you and your friends think you're bad. You've ended a life, destroyed a family, over a jacket, wheels, words. So who's next? Your best friend, your sister, you? Hey kids, get rid of your guns before it's too late. If you know a youngster with a gun, you know enough to phone these numbers, 224-GUNS or 871-HELP. In 1942, American troops entered Europe. Join host David 